Hello everybody, welcome to Demar's Coaching. My name is David. Thank you for joining me for this video. This video today is about narcissistic high conflict people. We've all known high conflict people. It's real easy today on the internet. You can just go out and see high conflict people. It's the people that say, I don't like drama. And all they do is talk about dramatic things, dramatic relationships, emotions, accusing people of things, exaggerating, embellishing, attacking people, high conflict people. Some of these people can't even go through the day without getting into a conflict with someone, uh, just going to the store, going on vacation, going to have, do something fun and get in conflict. Imagine someone on vacation, they get in conflict with the people checking their bags in, right, at the airport and they get into something with them and then something with security and then they get on the plane and something with the stewardess and the stewardess is threatening to turn the plane around and they're just blaming everybody, blaming everybody, blaming everybody, right? And then they target these people. And that's what this article is about today. So the article, Narcissistic HCPs, um, is by, is, I got it from psychologytoday.com. And it's interesting because all I did was Google type of person that attacks others socially and publicly. And this is what came up, Narcissistic HCP. And so this article goes on to say that there's five types of high conflict personalities. And I think of, you know, high conflict public socially as smear campaigns, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to read the intro first. And then I'm going to get into the article and some of the things that I want to talk about. High conflict personalities are fundamentally adversarial, adversarial personalities. They don't see their part in their own problems and instead are preoccupied with blaming others, possibly you. In this series, I offer many tips for dealing with high conflict people, HCPs. Today, I describe the basic features of five types of high conflict personalities so that you can be aware of them in order to avoid them or deal with them more effectively. They all have the basic HCP pattern of targets of blame. That's what we're gonna say a lot today, targets of blame. A lot of all or nothing thinking, black and white thinking, and unimagined emotions and extreme behaviors. In addition, they also have traits of five personality disorders. This is the part I find really interesting. Um, I've been saying that these high conflict people and people with smear campaigns and attacking people in public and socially, um, they're, they're, they're personality disordered and it's pretty significant cluster B. He, he adds one more. Um, some may just have traits in other, of traits of personality disorders, and some may have a full personality disorder. This can make them very difficult, but also more predictable. Here is a very brief overview of some of their common patterns of behavior. So I'm going to get into these, and um, I, I put them in a little bit different order. One, so, so there's five. Four are the four personality disorders in the cluster B. So you've got 10 personality disorders, cluster A, B, and C. And we're going to talk about the four in the cluster B, and there's one in cluster A. <clears throat> one, paranoid, high conflict people. And that's the one that's in the cluster A. Cluster A is considered weird. Cluster B, where you have your psychopath, sociopath, histrionic, borderline, narcissist, is considered wild. Wild people. That's all. They're just wild. <laughs> uh, paranoid HCPs. He says that they're suspicious of everyone around them. They're big on conspiracy theories and they think that the conspiracy theories are to hurt them. They carry grudges for years. They punish targets of blame. They will preemptively strike believing someone is about to harm them. Now, after I got done reading this article, I was amazed because I've been smear campaigned horrendously. I've had people turn on me and say all kinds of lies and exaggerations and false allegations. And it's incredible because the people that have done it to me have fit every single one of these in all the five that he lists. What do you guys think? I know a lot of you, unfortunately, have experienced stuff like this. Most of you, because you're here, because you've been abused by narcissistic people. And this is what they like to do. <clears throat> And the preemptive strike, it's incredible. They think you're about to say something about them, so they go do it to you. They think that people, they think that this is okay, this behavior is okay, and that everyone's gonna do this to them. They don't realize that by doing that, you're exposing yourself. They, they feel easy, easily unjustified. 
it's real easy to feel like something you did unjustified it was unjustified to them that hurt them and he says these are the people with the majority of lawsuits in the workplace the people that are high conflict in the workplace all the time and threaten lawsuits to their co-workers to their boss to the company And this guy later mentions in the article, but I'll mention it now, that he's a therapist and a lawyer. Um, number two, borderline high conflict people with borderline personality disorder. Now, now we're into the cluster B. Preoccupied with their close relationships and cling to them. Always fearing abandonment, don't want the feelings of abandonment. People around them become targets of blame for any perceived abandonment. You gonna leave me? Bam. You're a target. You got a raise today? You got a, you got a, you got a promotion? Somebody liked you? What? A girl said what to you? <laughs> Dangerous rages. Violent. Workplace. Friends. Anybody. Like that. And they go from friend to target to friend. Back to target again. Just like that. And then here he says, as a therapist and lawyer, many borderline HCPs are fighting in court with false allegations to keep their children and avoid feelings of abandonment. And boy, do I hear those stories. Oh, I hear those stories a lot. Number three, histrionic high conflict people, people with that, 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 sh that show histrionic personality traits or have the actual disorder, but they're high conflict people. <clears throat> drama and endless emotional stories. Oh my God, this person did this and it's not in there, saw this and none of this and I hate drama. <laughs> the accused targets of blame with exaggerated, fabricated behavior to hurt or manipulate them. They assume relationships are deeper than they are, constantly feeling surprised by your reactions to them. They could have a moment of, of, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Oh, we're friends. I love you. You did what? You don't want me anymore? Oh, I'm going to go do this to you in a minute. I'm not kidding. I've seen it. Demand to be center of attention, and they attack their targets of blame when they're not. Involve others to humiliate and publicly accuse their targets of blame. They want groups. They want people. They want gangs. As many people as I can get with me because that's what I'm trying to do. All of this, why do we do this? Is to destroy people, to hurt people, to ruin their lives. Okay, number four, the psychopath, sociopath, high conflict people, people without a conscience, <clears throat> or the antisocial, high conflict people, antisocial personality disorder is, like I said, the cluster B. And this is when you're talking about psychopaths and sociopaths. He says he calls them people without a conscience. Targets. You become a target if you get in their way or interfere with their plans. They're con artists. They're involved in criminal schemes, loyal to no one. They punish their targets and expect sex and affection from them while punishing them, right after punishing them. They're more biologically energized to harm people without remorse. Think of somebody out there trying to hurt somebody, ruin their life day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Not much remorse. <laughs> number five i left the narcissist one for the left for the last one narcissistic high conflict people they kick up for status by association um that's that's what i think and he goes on to say a little bit more and what i'm going to do is simply read this segment that he wrote so let me get some water Narcissistic high conflict people. Most people are familiar with the self-absorption of narcissistic personalities, but narcissistic high conflict people's focus intensely on their targets of blame. <clears throat> they are constantly putting them down, often in public in an effort to prove they are superior beings. They use a lot of insults with their partners, yet at the same time, they demand admiration and affection. They claim their behavior is justified because others treat them so unfairly. It's okay to hurt people. It's okay to destroy this person. They're a bad person. And what's the biggest thing that narcissists call others? Narcissists. The projection. I can't accept who I am. I'm going to call somebody else out. You're a narcissist. You're a narcissist. You're a bad person. And it's okay to take you down. Justified completely. They claim their behavior is justified because others treat them so unfairly. They discarded me. 
Yet they have no real empathy for their targets of blame or anyone else. In the workplace, they are known for kicking down on those below them and kissing up in those above them so that management won't realize how bad they are, really are. Bullying and sexual harassment may fit right into their drive for power and superiority. And again, the people that have smeared me, attacked me, have done all of it. Every single one of them. And that's why I like this article so much. It was amazing. Um, the narcissist high conflict person is the campaigner, right? The politician. I'm campaigning. There's a reason I'm doing this. Why? I'm attacking a bad person. Because I'm such a good person. The hero. Attention. Admiration. Feelings of control and superiority. Anybody who's gone through this, I'm deeply sorry. Anybody who's going through this now, I'm very sorry as well. Um, get help. Get help. Get people on your side. This is one of the worst things to do to try to fight alone. So get people on your side. Um, and I'm sorry, anybody that wants to share their examples down below, I know you guys have some and I'd appreciate it if you do share them. They're great. And I'm sorry again. Um, ask questions always let me know what you guys think of this video in particular and uh, yeah I'd really appreciate you sharing it um, vote up or down if you thought the video was good or bad let me know and uh, always love yourself first guys anybody that wants coaching you can find me at daviddemars.com thank you